So if you're a manufacturer or a distributor, it's likely a lot of your processes will revolve around items within Business Central. So this is where we track um, the items that we buy in and sell or items that make up finished goods um, and finished items themselves uh, as well for that, that matter. But here we're going to focus on resale items. Now, the view that you see here is called tiles, which shows pictures and inventory amounts. But I'm going to switch to um, the list view which is going to show my items side by side. It also makes it a little bit easier to select items um, so that you can start having a look at some of these fat boxes without having to actually drill into the item itself. Okay, So this Athens desk is a resale item. We're going to buy it in, we're going to sell it on, and we're going to make um, a profit percentage, as you can see here. Now, some other items we'll only ever buy in to facilitate either an assembly or a production run. And we can have a look at that in later sessions if necessary. But you can see some uh, items here, such as my parts and components, um, they'll only ever be used to make up things such as my mega cool gadget or my mega amazing gadget, um, depending on whether it's a, an assembly bill of materials or a production bill of materials. Now, we'll see that when we go into replenishment mechanisms. But as a short overview, assembly bill of materials are generally for simple items or bundles that, that generally take a, a small amount of, of parts and don't have much by way of resource um, or manufacturing processes behind them. Okay, um, whereas production, looking at this mega core gadget at the top, that is more advanced, um, uses the premium capability within Business Central, which is the most expensive type of license, um, to then associate production bill of materials and production routings with associated work centers and machine centers. So that's that's at the more complex end. But for the for the time being, we're going to have a look at our resale items and we're going to focus on this Athens desk. So you're free to look at the fat box to see a snapshot of what's going on with the item. We'll come to planning in a second. Um, something that's worth drawing our attention to is forecast casting where Business Central is using a clever algorithm um, based on its machine learning and, and AI intelligence to help us work out what we're going to need to buy in. So here for the Athens desk, it's forecasting that we're going to be left with negative inventory pretty soon if we don't buy in some more stuff. And that's based on this sales forecast that is estimating for us here. If we want to, we can create a purchase order directly from this forecast tab. We're not going to do that now. We're going to go into have a look at the item that we need to buy in to make up um, the sales order that we started earlier on in this process. So we're going to go into our London swivel chair. Okay. So item information can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. So if I click show more, I'll be able to see more fields. But for the time being, we'll just you know keep it simple and say that we've got item information and descriptions. Um, you know, when managing inventory, it doesn't have to be um, a physical item. It could be a service as well. So if it's not a physical thing and just say charging consultancy like we do as a business, that would be a service. So it doesn't uh, require the use of inventory. Moving a little bit further down, we've got a snapshot to see the, the status of, of our item, if you like. So we've got um, inventory, clicking on the three dots, we can see um, where our um, item is. So here, most of the items in the trial system are in this unspecified location, but if we were using multiple locations, they'd appear here. And then we can also see what we've got um, in progress. So if I click on the seven on sales order, that will take us back to the sales order that we created earlier. And likewise, if we are due anything in, um, that would display on purchase order there. Moving a little bit further down, we've then got cost information. So the default costing method for Business Central is FIFO, um, taking the last purchase price, which you see here. So clicking on that hyperlink, it will tell us how we got that price. So that was from the previous purchase. It's calculating that. And then we've got all our posting details there as well. And then moving on to sales price, that's where we then set it for Business Central to, to calculate that profit percentage for us. Okay, so that, that's all pretty standard stuff, you know, item description, cost, sales price. But moving a bit further down into replenishment, this is where Business Central is really going to help us because it should speed up quite a lot of our workflow. So first we set the replenishment mechanism, which is what I spoke about earlier. So this is a purchased item, which we then sell out. But if we were using assembly or production, we'd select it there. Depending on which option you've got selected, then dictates which one of these um, option sets you're using here. So if you're using assembly, you can specify the assembly bill of materials there. And if you're using production, then you specify your production bill of materials there. Again, we'll revisit that later if needed. Um, and then moving a bit further down, we've then got our planning. So it's worth taking a moment to pause here and say that with um, sales orders or with resale items, there's two ways of planning. So if you're planning from the item, then you can do what you see here. Okay, so we've got a reordering policy to say fixed reorder policy. When we get down to 10 units, I want to order in another 20. Okay, that will then dictate on 
the requisition worksheet, which I'll show you shortly, how many we buy in based on those planning parameters. So it's a really good way of making sure, especially if you've got high order volumes, that the system is always you know, doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Okay, the other mechanism is done using order planning, which is whereby the system will generate purchase orders based off the back of sales demand. So it'll look to the sales orders and it will generate a purchase order with enough to facilitate that sales order. So it's a little bit more reactive, um, but some smaller businesses tend to, to work in this way. So it depends on how you work as a business um, to you know, dictate what that preference is going to be. So last of all on the item card, then we've got item tracking. Um, so if you are wanting to track lot numbers, serial numbers, um, that's set up there and you can even have an expiration calculation. Um, but please note that if you are wanting to use item tracking, this needs to be set up as soon as we import your items into the system. You can't change the tracking information once you've transacted an item. So if I purchase this item in and I haven't got item tracking information set up, I'm not going to be able to go back and change that. So first I'll show you the requisition worksheet, which we can use um, based on our planning parameters to buy in the goods. So let's go to requisition worksheet. And what we'll do is we'll calculate a plan. So we'll get a, a little prompt here. And I've already calculated this plan, hence why I've already got the lines there. But you set your start and end dates, click on OK. It'll look to what the requirement is and it will suggest what we need to order in. So this is the blue swivel chair that we've just set up um, those planning parameters for there. And to carry out that message, all we need to do is click on process, carry out action messages, and it will it'll create that purchase order for us. We're not going to do it that way. What I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to use order planning, which is the other mechanism that I alluded to. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to calculate a plan based on the sales orders that I've got. So that sales order that we started is this 101017, um, which is prompting us to buy in um, not only the blue arm, the swivel chair, which is what we've been looking at, but also um, two of the conference table because it appears as though we don't have enough of that either. So I'll just select these, process and make orders. OK, depending on what type of order you're creating depends on you know, what option you select in each of these boxes. Okay, So if we're working with purchase orders, then we've got a number of options here. So here we're simply just making a purchase order. But say, for example, we were selling um, an item that before it could go out the door required either some sort of assembly or some sort of production. With production, we can dictate what level of production or what stage of production it goes into when it's created, um, and the same with uh, assembly orders. So I'm going to click on OK. It will take that order out of our planning list and it will create it as a purchase order, which we can then um, follow up with. To order Dynamics 365 licenses or to sign up to a 30-day free trial, navigate to d365.link forward slash now.